Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls moves in free agency this year by acquiring Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan on four-year and three-year $85 million contracts. But before we hop into all that, you know we got to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, as always. And today is going to be Tasia Alexander. Thank you so much for like, comment, and subscribing, turn on post notification, and showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, Greg, I know you heard the news as of late. Lonzo Ball is now a member of the Chicago Bulls alongside Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, and DeMar DeRozan. What are your overall thoughts on this trade? How will Lonzo Ball make an impact for a, from a positive standpoint for the Chicago Bulls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a Lonzo fan, I'm so happy for him because he, he got out of New Orleans, that guard, all those guards that were, that were playing, that were taking his minutes and stuff like that. So to come into a new scenery, a new location where you're going to be that, that secondary ball, ball handler to Zach Levine and can just can just bring your strengths bring your shooting bring your playmaking bring your perimeter defense to this team which is definitely needed and we're, and just come come here and just help take the load off of Zach Levine which, they, with, which is definitely going to help the Bulls going forward and then bringing in DeMar DeRozan a guy who can just put the ball in the basket has a, a plethora of moves in the mid range and really just knows how to just just knows how to score so I think that'll help Zach Levine so much and it's going to help Lonzo too I, I'm looking for Lonzo to be a, a most improved player candidate so I want him to come in and just bring a fresh new energy to Chicago yeah, and I, I feel like before we even start talking about the overall fit for Lonzo on Chicago, we got to talk about what the Pelicans gave up in Man. this entire trade. I mean, acquiring Devontae Graham from the Charlotte Hornets and Thomas Sedaransky from the Chicago Bulls, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, you end up clearing Eric Bledsoe and Steven Adams' contract that you, where you have more room to, you know, acquire Lonzo Ball in free agency, but you end up letting him walk and you get less value, let alone guys that aren't going to fulfill any needs to your roster. I mean, this is a roster that is going to need some facilitators. Steve, um, guys like Alexander Walker, Kyra Lewis, I don't really look at them too much as good playmakers or exactly. guys that can have a, a big impact from that dynamic. And then we also have to talk about the fact that they could have got way more value. I mean, I felt like Marcus Smart was somebody that they could have end up getting from the Boston Celtics. I heard that they ended up trading down that trade package. And then to bring in a guy like Devontae Graham and Thomas Sadaransky instead, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you lose a play, a good playmaker in Lonzo Ball and you bring in nothing. Yeah, I don't know what direction the Pelicans are going in. It's going to make Zion unhappy. And just they have a lot of questions. I mean, they did bring in a good center, Jonas Valanciunas. But the point guard role is very important. And getting the offense going and putting everybody in position. And something that Lonzo is capable of doing. You guys didn't even use him that way in New Orleans and get the value back. It's very upsetting. So that's why I'm happy that Lonzo left that situation. Because he can really flourish in this offense. Offense. Yeah, he's going to really fulfill a lot of the Bulls' needs from an offensive standpoint. I mean, this is a guy that he's going to be a perimeter threat from that standpoint. He improved his three-point percentage every single season that he's been in the NBA, so he's got some promise from that standpoint. And then we already talked about him being a great initiator of the offense. Probably going to enter Chicago as a secondary ball handler due to Zach Levine being a better scoring option from that standpoint. But other than that, I really like Lonzo Ball as an addition to this unit. And, you know, most importantly, he's also going to improve the – defensive struggles in that backcourt we no longer have to watch Kobe White and Zach Levine struggle to guard the perimeter anymore we're good and on top of that Lonzo Ball is going to take a lot of pressure off of Levine just from an overall standpoint having to you know run things offensively Zach Levine doesn't have to carry the scoring load so much he also has to guys like DeMar DeRozan that he can also rely on from that standpoint as well and then they're going to thrive in transition I mean you have a ton of athletes you got a yeah. lot of young youthful players that can you know get out and run Patrick Williams is a, a big athlete as well so I mean I think this is a really good situation for the Chicago Bulls overall and yeah but, what, I, what I also like is that they brought in a guy like DeMar DeRozan a second guy who you can give the ball to in clutch moments um and doesn't don't have to rely on Zach Levine so much so I also like that addition as well yeah and and that brings me to our next point yeah how much of a push does this make you know the Chicago Bulls contenders in the Eastern Conference I know this is a really big leap adding a guy like Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan but how much of a leap is this 
Yeah, yeah. The, I feel like they will be contending for the six or eight seed in the Eastern Conference. Like I, the Hawks just came off a of conference finals. Bucks are Bucks are brought back Bobby Portis and their and all their players, so they'd be good again. Brooklyn Nets obviously got the victory; they'll be good. Um, Seventy Sixers. I mean, so they're going to compete against these you know these teams that improve their rosters. But I think the starting five can potentially be really good. I, I really like Lonzo and what he brings. I know what the Rosen can do; he can give you twenty five plus a game. And then Zach Levine, the role that he was put in once he got here, him developing looking as a ball hitter improving his improving everything in his game is in between game finishing and and becoming a better better consistent shooter i think they're going to be really good they're going to be really really good they just need to figure out who you're going to fill out the roster with their bench has got a lot of guards very young they lost dad young they're going to lose larry marketing free agency so bringing some forwards back bringing some wing defenders back and bringing more experience to this roster is really going to help the bulls going forward yeah, I definitely think they need more wing defense. And then we also got to talk about the shooting walls as well. Not too exactly. many stretch forwards out there um, outside Nikola Vucevic. On the perimeter, they should be fine for the most part. But other than that, I think the biggest thing, aside from the roster, has got to be coaching. That's got to be a very big question. Yeah. Billy Donovan never really been that type of guy that can really take you deep into the postseason, let alone barely make the postseason. I mean, he's only got a win percentage for his career at 60%. So that could be a little bit alarming. And then we also have to wait on the development of some of these young guys on this roster don't know if Troy Brown or guys like Larry Markinen are going to remain on this roster heading into next season, but we're just going to have to wait until the end of free agency to find out that answer. But other than that, I really like, you know, how Chicago is shaping up overall. I mean, adding Alex Caruso, this is a guy with championship acumen. He helped the Los Angeles Lakers. He even he started in game six of the closeout game in that NBA final series to help them win a championship overall. So, I mean, he was a great addition, but I do feel like other than the young players, they got to add a little bit more veteran experience to this roster because guys like Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Lonzo Ball haven't really had too much postseason success to really give you much assurance from that standpoint. But what are the key pieces that you feel like, you know, the Chicago Bulls could acquire this the rest of free agency are they done making moves i mean what what are your thoughts no on they're, they're definitely not done they're so aggressive um they i think that like i said they need to bring in some more forwards they have a menu uh, I, I like a menu but that's just not enough bring some more forwards especially because you lost that young maybe bring in another center maybe a stretch four stretch five um and bring in more wing defending maybe bring in a guy like danny danny green maybe bring in maybe bring in a guy like reggie jackson i mean i know you have um i know you have kobe white and 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 Alex Caruso off the bench, but you just I don't know, like just fi figure out how you can get more wing defending and see what vets can really make an impact on this team. Right, and I and I know a lot of their key losses is probably is going to be guys like Garrett Temple. He was involved in that trade to New yeah, Orleans. that's a key. And then loss. Daniel Tice, he ended up re, um, signing with the Houston Rockets. So that's a big defensive liability that you ended up losing. Um, from that standpoint. And then Laurie Markkinen, he was just somebody that just didn't really mesh well with this group. I think he's more of a San Antonio type of guy. Let's see and wait if he ends up, you know, there. And then obviously you had to give up a little bit to get DeMar DeRozan. So Thad Young, future first round pick and some second round picks were also gone as well. But I mean, other than that, how can the Chicago Bulls make this work? How can they be a top five seed in the Eastern Conference next year? They can be a top five seed first of all, filling out this roster, but also knowing everybody's role. Sitting down with Lonzo and just figuring out what he needs to bring to this team and everybody contributing ball movement them buying in on the defensive side i mean they were 11th in the defensive rating last year so not too bad just just missed a just just missed the top 10 in that in that field but i feel like they can improve with lonzo bringing his perimeter defense and zach levine and, and what zach levine brings but also um just continue to improve this team i i feel like they're not done yet they still got cap space so find find somebody who can really come in and just fit this roster I, I, chicago is a very gritty and tough place so find some guys who are going to come in and bring some toughness to this team because that's something that i feel like they very they lack Right, right. And obviously, I already touched bases on it. They definitely need to improve their second unit, add some shooting, add veteran experience. And then also, I think they just need to let Lonzo run the offense the way exactly. that he, he should be able to. I mean, this is a guy that hasn't really had the opportunity to really run an offense since he's been in the NBA. I mean, he was hindered when he was a Laker, especially when LeBron James came along. And then in New Orleans, they took the ball out of his hands from that standpoint. So he wasn't really able to develop. So I feel like if you let Lonzo have some growing pains, I feel like it could be a positive as an end result. But you guys 
guys let us know what you think in the comment section if the Chicago Bulls are a playoff team certainly I think they are if they stay healthy next year but let us know in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on Apple Podcasts make sure to like comment and subscribe turn on post notifications give us a 5 star review and a 5 star rating but besides that it's your boy Nazi Chunga Benny I'm here with my co-host Greg King and we out we out Thank you.